Educator Group, Asia Pacific Connect, YouTube Live. Uh, we want to apologize for coming in late. That is my fault, not the other people that you see on the screen here. Uh, went to the wrong link as we were using uh, StreamYard, a, a wonderful streaming app. But uh, anyhow, we would like to get on because we know a few people have been waiting. Uh, first, thank you for joining us. Uh, we want to start by telling you a little bit about what this Google Educator Group thing is. Uh, Google Educator Groups are uh, a program within Google that brings educators from local communities together to share teaching and learning ideas to help you be better teachers, to help you connect with other educators and share ideas, help kids uh, learn, become independent learners, become curious, and ultimately better people. Um, but it's not always all about technology, and it's not always all about Google. We just kind of come together and share lots and lots of ideas. Now, I'm going to quickly share my screen with you, and we're going to show you the GEG Asia Pacific website that we've been working on in the last couple of months. And we are going to put this in a banner so you can see it um, in the bottom of your screen. And remember, this is being recorded live, so if you have to go, then you can come back and watch it a little bit later. Now, if you go to GEG Asia Pacific Connect and our website, all you have to do is tap okay. on whatever language is comfortable. Now, if you go to GEG, you got a little bit of feedback there, but that's all right. So click on the language that you like, and then you can kind of go with uh, whatever kind of learning in whatever language you want. If you click on our events tab, you'll see this event that's happening at the moment. And if you click on our GEG by country tab, you're going to find a nice little my map made by our guy, Adnan. And you can click on the different kinds of GEGs in whatever location and see if there's one near you. Now, if the map doesn't work for you, though, scroll down and look by country and check out the links. And maybe there's a Google Educator group in your area. If there isn't, why not start one? You can do that by contacting Google. And we'll tell you how to do that a little bit later. And now what we'd like to do is tell you a bit about today's event. So right now, we have nine different YouTube live presentations happening at the same time in nine different languages. Um, we've got Chinese, Korean, Japanese, English, Tamil, Tagalog, Indonesian, Malaysian. So there is something for everybody. Now we're gonna have our presenters tonight introduce themselves and we're gonna go in order of the presentation and they'll tell us a little bit about what they're gonna teach you, who they are, where they're from, and their relationship with learning with Google. And we're gonna start with Gary Garcia. <clears throat> Gary, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi everyone, I'm Gary Garcia from the Philippines. I am a GEG Malolas and GEG Ortigas. Yes, hi. I'm Gary Garcia. I am from the Philippines. I am GEG Ortigas and Malolos uh, 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 leader, and I'm a Bulacan State University professor. I also teach kids, the preschool, I, so I have a strong background with teaching. T tonight, I'll be talking about how can you visually organize your folders and files in Google Drive. Wonderful. Thank you, Gary. And after Gary, we're going to hear from our man in Hong Kong named Jason Pang. Hello, I'm Jason Pang from Hong Kong. I'm the leader of GEG Hong Kong Macau SAL. Nice to meet you all. So I'm a science teacher. Uh, later on, I will share something about the science teaching, science education. Great, thank you very much, Jason. And after that, you're gonna hear from Mr. Steve McGuire. Hello, my name is Steve McGuire. I'm living near Nag Nagoya, Japan. I teach at a small arts university. I teach English, and I'm also one of the GEG leaders in Nagoya. And I'm going to be talking about Google Forms and, as time allows, a little bit about Google Quizzes. Yep, and congratulations, Steve. We just got Steve, the GEG leadership status, literally came in about four or five days ago. He's official. Uh, and after Steve, we're going to hear from another GEG leader here in Japan, Aaron Noxon. Hey, I'm a GEG leader here in Kyoto City, um, Google certified innovator and teacher here in Kyoto. And I'll be talking about some Google tips and tricks that I use all the time that I'm always surprised other people don't know. So I'd love to share those things with you guys. All right, let's do this. All right. And if we do have time, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, Google Sites and how you can use them for student portfolios, for your professional learning blog, any kind of classroom website. But we'll see if we get there. 
All right, everybody. And as we go, we're going to show you a few of the comments from time to time that people have. But first, we're going to hear from Gary. So, Gary, can you share your screen, please? Okay. Let me share my screen now. Okay. There you go. Can you see? Can you see my screen now? We got you. Okay. So for tonight, uh, showing you how to visually organize files and folders and emojis. These are very simple things that you can do, but but uh, to organize your files, but this will make also easier your, uh, to locate your, all your files and folders. So we can use colors and emojis. So let's start with the use of colors. So colors, if it's red, you can assign that color as very important, or if it's blue, you want to share it with others for personal use. So to make them stand out, that's why we color them. So how do we color our file? So for example, I have a, I have a folder here. Let me create a folder for example. Uh, okay, so to create a folder, we all know that we just have to click new and then folder. But instead of just saying, let's say this is GEGA pack, instead of using the same uh, gray color for that folder, we can make it stand out by select, while it is selected, we can make it stand out by clicking this more actions button. And then we can change the color of this folder so we can make it stand out. So it's you can easily identify it visually. Now, uh, you can change different folders in the, with different colors depending on how you assign these colors. But aside from that, you can also make use of emojis. So, well, for example, in this case, I have this re reference. Maybe I can just share everyone this link. So let me share the link first. Okay, so uh, I think, uh, Nate, can you please share that link? I have shared it to you. So can you share it to everyone, please? So to easily make use of an emoji, for example, let me make use of this very smiley face. All you need to do is click that uh, emoji, and then it's already copied in the clipboard, and you can make use of it by right-clicking any folder or file, and then, for example, in my case, I'll rename the folder with the red color and just paste it there, Control V or Command V if you're using Windows or Mac, and then you have it there. So you can easily uh, change the color of your uh, folder or files and make use of uh, emojis to make to easily identify them. So when you use emojis, it's automatically placed on top because these are, uh, I think, special characters. That is why it's on top of your folder. So that's how you can visually organize and uh, visually share, uh, visually organize your files and folders using emojis and colors. Wonderful stuff. Thank you so much, Gary, for that presentation. Google Drive is a wonderful tool for organizing yourself, folks. Uh, we're not seeing any uh, questions. We do see that we have a number of people that are watching the broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free in the comment box on YouTube to just type them in there, and one of the five of us will get back to you if the presenter doesn't get to do it live. Um, so we're going to move on uh, next to, uh, to Google Science Journal. If you're a science teacher or if you're teaching elementary, you probably have science in your curriculum. Uh, Jason Pang is going to share with you his experience with this Relatively new tool from Google, but insanely cool. So, Jason, if you can share your screen, we're going to share your. Uh, your okay. You already have great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, nice to meet you all. And today, I will going to talk about the Science Journal app. The Science Journal app is a wonderful app because it connects all the sensors in the cell phone, and then you can use the cell phone to act as a mini science lab. And you can do some lab report, do some uh, fun activities. So uh, let me introduce myself. I am Jason Pang, and I'm a, a Google certified trainer and innovator. So today, I will introduce this app to you. Wait, can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound here? 
Do we have song? Can Can we get you to uh, turn up your uh, mic? Uh, we can't quite hear your uh, your sound. No. Turn up the mic. Wait, I'm or on not up. your mic, but your uh, wherever you're playing from from YouTube. Oh yes. There sorry. you go. Wonderful. These things happen, folks. Thanks, Jason. Sorry. So here we go again. Science Journal. Our physical world is full of wonder. It's a constant source of thought-provoking questions. And it offers us observable and measurable information to help understand and answer these questions. Light, sound, and motion all contain answers to how the world around us work. And Google Science Journal allows you to observe, measure, record, and document this information all from your phone. Gather and document science experiments from the world around you using sensors already in your phone. Graph your data, record your experiments, and organize your questions and ideas. The answer is in your pocket with Science Journal. In the Science Journal app, we have a lot of um, sensors, just like the accelerometer, the light sensor, and the sound sensor. And yesterday, I have just um, done a fun activities in uh, by using the Science Journal app. And now I'm going to share what I done yesterday. Hi there, I'm Jason Pan from Hong Kong. And I'm the leader of GEG Hong Kong Macau SAR. Today, I would like to introduce an app called Google Science Journal to you. You can find the Google Science Journal app in your Play Store or in your App Store in iOS. Science Journal is a very special app. It connects all the sensors in your mobile phone and then use the sensor as a measuring tool. In most of the science learning activity, we can use the measuring tools to help us. And now I'm going to demonstrate how can we use the Science Journal app to make a science project, just a mini science project. Okay, first of all, look at the white right hand side, white right bottom part, you can find a plus sign. This plus sign, you can add a new experiment. And today, we try to rename this experiment into GEG APAP. Science Journal. Just put tick because I don't need a cover photo now. This is a project, so you can make some notes here. This is a project about musical instrument. Okay, and then the next tab is about the sensor. It is very important in the science journal, and this is the crucial part in the science journal app. So you can find there is a lot of sensors in the mobile phone, like the pressure sensor, light sensor, complex, uh, linear accelerometer, the magnetometer, and the pH. And now I'm going to use this function, the pH, to do some scientific investigation project. If we have a higher tone, the frequency will be higher. If you have a lower tone, then the frequency will be lower. The basic principle is when I hit the picture, then I can hear the sound. And there is a note. Actually, the tone is quite high, right? Quite high. And then when I put some water into the picture, the tone will be changed. This is lower tone, right? And then put more water. The tone being even lower. So I can use the Science Journal app, put to the next of the beaker. And then once I hit it, then I can record the sound. It's about 2,900 something, right? When you need to record the sound, you can press the red button here. And then press stop. So all the data record here. Um, study your record. Okay, 
in our experiment. Actually, we are hitting the picker this time. Now the picker have a tone about 2,911 hertz. And you can look at the data bank from the web. Then you can find out what note it is. It's around 2,900 something. 2,900 something should be F sharp, F sharp seven. So you know, you know where is the note. And now we can do a mini project. Put the cell phone here and turn on the Science Journal app. And now we try to make different pitch. Just monitor the sound by the Science Journal app, and then try to make three different tone. Of course, the level of the water are different. Once you calibrate all the things, then you can make a song by yourself. Okay, now, I'm going to play a song with you. Then you can go back here and try to take a photo. With your project and put all the notes, record recordings and the picture together and you can make your science lab report. This is what the science journal app can do. And one more thing is very important is there is an activities tab in the science journal. And this is the reason why I like Google Science Journal, because most of the educator put their science activity onto this community. And in this community, you can search different science activity by different level, equipments, and also the author. So you can choose a best activity to your student. Yes, this is why I like the Science Journal. And actually, the Science Journal uh, activity part you can you can log in in the in the web just like what I'm doing. You can um go to your um, uh, browser and then log in this uh, um the link, and I will post the link later on on the YouTube live. Okay, and tab experiment, then you can see there is a lot of activity, and you can choose one best fit for your student and I just doing is that the hit hit the note project hit the note project and when I press inside go inside the hit the note project then you can download some educator guy the student guy and also the st science journal guy it is quite complete and quite good for us because it, it is all resources that we can use immediately and just one more example I want to show you because I think this is quite interesting um yes this one to build an earthquake resistant house this is a cross discipline project um we can start from some some knowledge about the uh, geog uh, geography and also start from some knowledge about the engineering physics and um, science and then we talk about how can we build a a uh, resistance proof house and doing this um, activity, you have a lot of resources, just like uh, the overview and what will be covered in, in this project. And then I just, I just tell you something, it's quite cool. We just put our cell phone onto the model and then we shake the model and then the cell phone can detect the vibration of the model. And then you try out different model and see which model is the best resistant fluent house. And this is a good project I suggest to you. So uh, please feel free to go to this website and please feel free to download the app and then try it out now. Yes, this is all for my presentation. Thank you.
And thank you so much for that, Jason. Like that's totally cool. I, I've read on uh, read up on Science Journal, but I uh, I've never used it because I'm a social studies and history teacher. So I'm sure science teachers out there would say that is totally cool. And if you're not a science teacher, then why not introduce it to your science teacher? Um, the link has been posted in the comment box. So go back and have a look. I'm sure Jason will post the link again sometime through the broadcast. So moving right along. Now, Google Forms is something that uh, I think we all, not we all, but uh, people tend to use, but Steve McGuire has made really good use of this in his classroom, uh, or his class is. We're gonna let Steve tell you a little bit about that. So Steve, if you can share your screen with us. Okay, small please. I'm new at this, so please uh, have patience. Let's see, no share problem. screen. And Chrome tab, Chrome tab, ah, oh, there it is. Sure. Okay. okay uh, let's see if this appears. All right, we in? Take it away. You're good to go. Okay. Um, just see it a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Google Forms and, and if there's time, a little bit about Google Quizzes. Um, each of these could be a complete seminar for a uh, few people. Can, can I interrupt oh. you for a minute, Steve? Sorry, your, yeah. your your audio is a little bit jiggly. So if you can get a stronger, um, like just jiggle your cable there, maybe or something. Okay, I'm, I'm, let me see if I can just. Oh, you're on. good now. That's great. Okay, you're muted at the moment. You're muted at the moment there, Steve. So if you there can, we go. Um, there you go. Are we in? You're good. Take it away. All right. Um, let me see if this is working for me. No. A lot of clicks to get through to this. There we go. Um, Not a so problem. Each, each of these. Could, uh, okay, are we in? Each of these could be a show by themselves. Um, but I just want to show you a little, not a little bit, so that you can get started. Um, Google Forms is a way to do surveys. It's a way to collect information from students or parents, to, or to create auto graded quizzes. If you give quizzes in your classroom, they, they can be graded automatically. Uh, questions can be short or long answer, multiple choice, check boxes, or drop down menus. And uh, Ditch That Textbook has a list of uh, um, things that you can do, such as a picture based sign up sheets, sign in sheets, or even dot dot auto graded quizzes. And there's standardized formats you can use, or you can create your own, and it customizes the group or individually, and it can be made available to the students or not, depending on your goals. Um, I'll show you two examples. This is one that I used in my classroom. Um, I have eight classes where I do this task, and I want the students to share their ideas first with me and then with each other. Um, my students are a little bit shy. So I have them fill it out first on Google Forms, and then I make it available to them during class so they have access to it. Um, it means also that I know ahead of time what their ideas are going to be, so I can make vocabulary quizzes. I can make a word cloud. I can do a lot of things with it. So I can cut by the I do all of these little pieces by myself. So they have a class the first name, last name. Um, which is not working for me. And I show them an image. Uh, and they write for text based on what uh, the three visual thinking strategies, questions, uh, the research approach I use, what's going on in the future, what do you see that makes you say that, and um, what, uh, what, what more can we find? So these people I don't think it's like what I talked. I'm going to have to go up again. Okay, Steve, we're, we're having a hard time there with the sound breaking. We've got a few people noticing in the comments. So tell you what, can we get you to mute your mic? And we're going to come back to you in a little bit. And if you could find it, I don't know if you're wired or wireless with your headphones. That could be a, a battery issue or something. Um, okay. But maybe what we'll do is jump ahead to Aaron and then come on back to you. How's that sound? Sounds good. Sorry about that. No, no, all good. These things are going to happen. It's the first time we're doing this, folks. So uh, 
we appreciate your patience and we appreciate people. Uh, thank you, Bing, for letting us know that the sound is breaking there. Um, so we're going to head over to Erin Knoxon. She's going to give you some cool stuff, and then we're going to uh, come back to Steve in a bit and see if we got the audio fixed up. Erin, you ready to go? All right. Can you hear me? Hear you loud and clear. All right. Can you see my screen? You're looking good. With my little Halloween characters on it? Adorable. Oh, yay. All right. All right. So I just want to briefly talk about some time-saving Google tricks that I use all the time. I'm not going to present this. I'm just going to keep it in my view here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about briefly was Google Keep. Um, if you guys don't use Google Keep, you're really missing out. Um, I use this all of the time. As you know, you can just click over here on the side now and you can see all of your keeps over here. But I also like to go into Google Keep itself to take notes and to do different things with. Um, I make all my notes here. I used to use Google Docs and just catalog everything in here. But the fact that you can drag and drop and move this around and just do whatever you want with it and put pictures and embed maps and change the colors. Um, it's really useful for me and I use it all the time. You can just start typing a new note here and you can do so many various things here. You can add people in it, you can share it, you can move it. Um, I really encourage you to use this if you wanna keep track of all your stuff. All right, let's pop back over here. Google Classroom, for those of you who use Google Classroom, um, I don't know if you've seen all the different new things that they're doing around with it, but it's so versatile and you can do so many things. And my favorite thing about it is just the fact that you can click on it and make a copy of the entire classroom. You can, of course, reuse any assignments. You can reuse the class. Um, if you haven't used it, try to use Google Classroom. If you can, the more you use it, the more you will like totally fall in love with and adore it. Let's see. Um, Calendar notifications. Um, this is something that um, I don't know if you guys use as many as I use all the time. Um, but for example, this evening, um, I have children and they're running around doing various things. And I was trying to get dinner ready and do everything. And my husband's like, oh, my God, don't you have to be online for something? Um, and all of a sudden, my phone started going off. You can go into any calendar event and put 15 minute, a 10 minute, a five minute. You can put up to five different notifications. You can have it email you, you can have it ping on your phone, um, but set those calendar notifications and it will save you and it will save you time. Um, your bookmarks bar. I'm really hoping you guys can see my bookmarks bar across the top here. Um, I know like this is like the new age and we don't use bookmarks anymore, but I use bookmarks to keep track of absolutely everything that I have to do. And I love that you can drag and drop them. So I can just go in here and I can drag this one over here and I can put it in this folder. And then if I decide that I want an extra folder in here, I can just go add another folder. There we go. And then I can go back in here and I can move it into a different folder. The bookmarks bar is on your mobile. So I will constantly be dragging and dropping things when I'm on my Android device in there. Um, it's here, it's there, it's drag and drop, and it just keeps everything organized because I have 10,000 things that I have to keep track of. Your Omnibox, if you don't know the word for the Omnibox, it's your tab up here that we used to call where you typed in your URL or your URL bar. But the beautiful thing about the Omnibox is you can search for anything in there. For example, if I want to go on Amazon, I just type Amazon and I hit tab and then I can just type for what I want to search on Amazon right there. There are so many different things that you can do with your Omnibox. Um, you can search anything, of course, on Google. Um, most major websites, though, you just type in the thing and you hit tab and it's actually going to search for you within that website. Um, it's just something that's so important. You can search for your contacts in there. You can search for different things that you have associated with anything in your Google account. So try playing around with your Omnibox and look at it sometime. It's it's fun. Um, free templates. My favorite place to get to free templates is this website here called Slides Carnival. My Halloween one that I have on tonight, I got from here. You can go to this website and you can search. You can look at all the templates. You can look by color. You can look you know, for your season but you just click into the ones that you want, orange templates. And then look, there's the 2019 one. And then you just go into it and you say, okay, I want this one. Go to preview and download. You can download it as a Google Slides theme or you can download it as a PowerPoint theme. These are free. And then what you do is you put them in and then like, for example, in here, if I wanna change my theme, I can go into change my theme. You search for the file that you downloaded and boom, you have your new template. So play around with it. There's so many free ones that you can get. Shift Z is my absolute favorite thing in the whole wide world. If you haven't used Shift Z, 
go into any document that you have in Google Drive anywhere, hold down shift and click the letter Z. Um, you can then add that file to any folder on your Google Drive at any tier and any level. Um, and it is the exact same file, just viewable in a different location within your drive. So I have two different classes that I use the same document with. So I shift Z that file into the folder for this teachers and the folder for this teachers. And then that exact same file that is then being edited by these two different groups of teachers can be seen by both of them, yet they don't have to all be in the same two folders. I love shift Z. Um, I know that they have workspaces now and workspaces are good as well, but this is my lifesaver if you use tiered folders and organize everything in your Google Drive. Bitly. Um, Bitly is my favorite place to use now that Google, how would you pronounce it? Google, the G-O-O -O dot G-L is gone. And with Bitly, it's amazing. If you go to Bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y, you can create links. And now they've added QR codes too. So if you need to give a link out to your kids or to your friends, this is an amazing thing to use because you can rename it to whatever you want. Um, keyboard shortcuts. Um, control C, Control V, Control X, I'm sure we all know, but do you know how to open uh, Control T, new tab? Do you know how to Control W, close your tab? Go Google keyboard shortcuts, especially your Chrome keyboard shortcuts. There are so many you can use, especially if you use Chromebooks, and it'll save you tons of time. And the last thing I want to point out is that we're broadcasting live on YouTube today um, because anything you put out on YouTube, you can then use it again for another class. So anything I do and I make for class, I just automatically do it with YouTube. Screencastify is a great way to do screencasts that you can then put on YouTube. And today we're using StreamYard, which is a really useful thing post Hangouts to show all of your different streams. Like we have all of our things here and you can see the little duck that says powered by StreamYard, but it's free. So go check these things out. And I encourage you guys to share the tricks that you find with other people because that's the only way we all learn. And I'm gonna be done now and go back over to you guys. Bye. I'm going to close this out. Great stuff, Aaron. Thank you so much. And yeah, I picked up, I always pick up a couple of things from you, including StreamYard, mm. actually. GEG Asia Pacific Connect is using StreamYard because Aaron suggested it. Uh, so thanks a lot for finding that. And as she said, walking the talk, she's sharing with other people so we can all help ourselves be better teachers and kids be better learners and us be better lifelong learners. Um, so we're going to head back to Steve now. We're going to get Steve to share his screen. And Steve, you okay. didn't have a long time to chat there, so I think you can start from the beginning again. Oh, okay. Uh, We're going to talk uh, about my form. How is my sound? Sounds good now. We'll let you know if you get crackly, and then we'll move forward. Okay, so I'll start where I was again? Yep. Okay. All right. Go ahead and start from uh, the beginning. Just share your screen with us, and we'll get going. Okay. Um, I filled in the forms now. This is the... Uh, is it appearing for you now? So I just typed in, yep. I have, um, I'm gonna talk about Google Forms and Google Quiz. Um, it, I don't know how much time we have in my screen. I'm a little crazy on me. Um, so Google Forms is a feature, of course, a way like the nation, but people are familiar with that, like surveys, but you can make your own surveys and you collect information from parents or from students. I do it to get my students to are very shy about speaking English on their own and record their ideas, and they do it ahead of time. So I know what they're going to say, and I know what vocabulary they're going to use, so I can make quizzes, I can make word clouds, and so I just can kind of weave everything into um, what they're doing in class that day. But um, the, the system that I use is called Visual Thinking Strategies, and it's a way to teach critical thinking skills. And they look at an artwork, and they answer three questions. What's going on in this picture? This is a, pic a famous picture you may recognize. And they, they don't talk about um, what they see, they talk about what's going on, what's happening. And they have to give a reason for why they have that opinion. So I try to get them to share their ideas with each other. Yeah? I can collect the day and the hour, their names and their ID numbers, and it's collected into a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet that I can access. And I can. that's how I can copy all the vocabulary into a word cloud. Um, uh, let's see if I can get this to work for me. I can show you how the, um, how it looks. Maybe I'm not going to be able to, um, the other thing for Google quizzes, um, well, the, it's collected in the spreadsheet and I can sort by ID number. I can sort by class hour and I can cut and paste from the, uh, from the page. 
Um, I want to go back and show you. This is where it got wonky on me. Share screen, share screen. Now I also have done quizzes. And okay, we can't see your screen right now, so if you can, it's coming. It's coming. There we go. Yep. Um, uh, my my. It, anyway, I'll, I need to learn how to use this uh, online system a little bit better. But this is a sample quiz I made. Um, uh, just based on, uh, I'm from Minnesota, so I just put a quiz together on, about Minnesota. I think I'm going to have to come in again. Just a second, please. I already responded. I had the student answer questions about Minnesota, and you can share the results with the students and let them know um, whether they got the answer right or wrong. So I asked, like, what is the capital of the state of Minnesota in the U.S.? Is this coming in now? Uh, no. We're not seeing your screen, no. Okay. Now, is it coming? Yeah, you should see it there, yep. Is it there? Yep. Okay, so I asked, for example, what is the capital of the state of Minnesota? I said Minneapolis, uh, he got it wrong. Uh, what, from what lake in Minnesota does the Mississippi River start? Lake Superior, that's also wrong. Oh, that's not coming in either, just a second. Uh, that's okay, actually, because you've answered it with your own account and you uh, said it so that you can only respond uh, once. But I can yes. show the quiz feature. I've got one set up, ready to go, as we talked about before, if you want. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is, is I, this the I, end? Do you want to show something else? or? Well, I wanted to show this, actually. But um, the, if you have it handy, then the main thing is that the students can get a response. You can choose as the teacher whether the students get feedback on right or wrong. Or you can have them take the quiz over and over until they get all the answers right. Or you, or you, can, um, you can give them the feedback on the scores. And then the last thing, um, Aaron Matt mentioned Google Classroom. Um, if you do auto grading, you can have the scores automatically logged into Google Classroom. So um, it's a very useful feature. I'm not showing it at, at its best. So if you have a sample, that would be helpful. Okay, great. Um, I will actually. So let me just share my screen here for a moment. And uh, like Steve, uh, the sample I was gonna give is uh, uh, one that uh, I had to log out of my other account and log back in because I had done it with uh, my personal account. One of my students did. Anyway, uh, so as Steve, Steve was saying, uh, this is set up as a quiz where students get feedback. And like Steve did, I went in and I already filled out a bunch of answers. Uh, but to let you know that you can use drop down menus, check boxes, you can use these uh, uh, grid based radio buttons, uh, you can use check boxes, and you can also have. Um, these anecdotal open response questions. So I'm going to click submit. And oh, I have to verify. So which ones have cars, cars, cars? And that's happening actually because I'm outside of uh, my domain. So I click verify. And now I can view my score. Now, the way I use this is at the beginning of a unit, a unit pretest, I, I use it to see students um, what they know uh, and what they don't know but they can also do that themselves and they automatically have a response sent to them. So what we do is at the end of unit one, they'll do this exact same test. I'll make a, a copy of it and call it unit one final test. Um, I didn't put numbers and values on this because I don't want them to be worried about their score. So they got zero out of zero. That's deliberate. You can put a number on that if you want. So if you go down, you can see, okay, that was incorrect. So why, what is the correct answer? And you'll notice my strategy is for the correct answer and for the feedback for incorrect answers. I don't say wrong or anything. I say not quite, but it's the exact same text and it saves me time. So I just copy and paste the same answers in there because really the students who get it correct get the reinforcement of why it's correct. And the students that didn't get it correct can see why it's incorrect. So I scroll down and for all of these, the students see what the correct answer should be. And they go boom, 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 and that's it. And then they can go back and check this because their responses are automatically emailed to them. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen there. Okay. Uh, so our our guy Jason in Hong Kong, he uh, he had to step out for a little bit, uh, but we do have a little bit of time left. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of talk a little bit about Google Sites. 
the first thing that I'm going to do, though, before I start to share is I'm going to post a slides deck that I've put out publicly. Uh, the things I'm going to show you will be a very quick, rapid fire, eight minute kind of explanation. Um, but if you go to that slides deck, copy it, uh, change it in whatever way you want, uh, share it with your colleagues, because it shows you how you can build your own Google site. Um, and not only at the end of it, it shows you how you can uh, turn your site into a domain. So let me quickly share my screen again. And let me first show you what a Google site with a domain looks like. Okay, you can have your drop down menus and things like that. Uh, you can put in nice, uh, uh, I guess it's, uh, these are referred to as, um, uh, as uh, what is it? Uh, well, these little templates where you can have four or five bars across the top. Um, so you can actually make a clean, good looking site with a proper domain. You can see at the top, I hope it says gegnagoya.com. Um, but what I would like to do is tell you how you can create your own site. So first you want to go to your apps launcher and you notice here, I don't have Google sites in my apps launcher. That's because of the domain I'm using at the moment. But what you can do is go up to the Omnibox, like Aaron told you, and just type in sites.google.com, google.com. And it's going to take you to whatever um, you know account that you're in right now. So what you'll want to do to create a site is go down here to the bottom left and just click the plus button because you are adding a new Google site. And to save time, let's do, now you could build on your own, put your own backgrounds in and banners and things like that. But uh, as Aaron showed, you can save time by choosing some of their templates that they have. So let's go with this one, Diplomat. Okay. And so you only have to go in and basically change your title. Um, my blog, for example. Now, again, it, it could be a professional learning blog. It could be your students' blogs. It could be a student portfolio where they put samples of their work and, and reflections. Um, it could be a professional website for yourself, really whatever you want it to be or what your students want it to be. Uh, the nice thing about Google Sites is that it's very, very easy to use. So I'm gonna click up here, just make sure my blog name is, or my site name is up there and you see it's appeared. If I want, I can add a logo. I can change the image. If I want, I can select an image. And you can see what I'm doing right now is I'm just really setting things up here. Now, if I want to add a page, well, first actually let's insert some text. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna insert a text box. It automatically appears my about my blog. And let's say I wanna put a picture next to it. These little blue things, I just have to pull over here. I just drop it to the size that I want. Now it's still very limited in terms of what you can do, but you can change things a little bit for color and, and context and, and things like that. Images, let's say I want to select an image. I can upload one of my own if I want. Um, I could search for one. Just gonna go, whoops, sorry, I'm gonna click. Well, you could actually paste a URL image in there if you want, or you could search within Google. Just says blogs, I'm just gonna use that one just for the sake of showing you. Let's resize it a little bit. Make it look a little bit smaller, fire it over there. You'll notice here, this is what we call drag and drop. It's, it's nice and easy. Um, if I wanna put something in from Google Drive, I could just click on that. Let me grab something that's pretty recent. How about I just use this slide deck from a recent event that uh, Steve and I have done. And it's right there. So my kids or my students or whoever can go right to the slide deck. Now, let me just close that. I got my little X button right up here. Um, let's say I want to end up uh, one of the layouts. That's what I meant to say, layouts. Let's say I want to put a layout in there. I want to put an image. Let's select an image. Actually, let's search for one. Let's just go blog again. Well, since we're on the theme, hey, that's kind of cool. I can throw that one in there. And in here, I could throw in a YouTube video maybe. Let's go with GG Nagoya, see what happens. All right, let's throw a little video of that. Anyway, for the sake of time, you can see how I'm adding little things. If I want, let's say this I want up here, whoops, I don't want to duplicate it. I can click, 
I can drag it and I can reorder things really simply. You can actually put in tabs and things like that. You can put in a table of contents. You can put in what's called an image carousel, which would be uh, a slideshow that people can click through. You can add buttons. You can add dividers just to kind of give a different aesthetic, separate things in your page. You can add uh, a, a Google Calendar if you want. So if I want to choose the GEG Nagoya calendar, I can insert it. And then I can resize it and all that kind of stuff too. So you can see how this would be very useful as a class website. Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Forms, Charts, you can put all of those things in there. Now one thing you're wondering is, well, what if I want other pages in there? So you would just click on pages here. And let's just say I have a new page. Let's call this about me. Okay. So I put that in there and I can see I've got my home tab and I've got my about me tab. So as I'm editing, I want to go back home, edit that page. I only have to click there or I can click on the about me tab or I can even click under pages. Now let's say for example, under about me, I want to tell you a little bit more about me. I can just go here and I can click add a sub page. Let's say my dog, done. And I'm gonna get a sub page that says my dog. So then up here, when I do my page navigation, I see my dog. Let's go back to home, just kind of show you how that looks like. Drop down menu, there I go to my dog. Let's add another sub page. Maybe I wanna talk about my dog's favorite food. And I click done. And then I have another drop down menu. So now I've got my drop down sliding menu, and then people can navigate that way. Uh, and it's nice that you can quickly reorder things. Let's say I want to put my dog and my dog's food under about me, and I don't want it as a sub page. So you can see it's pretty easy to navigate. Also, you can hide that navigation. Let's say I'm working on my dog's food page. So I don't want people to see it. So when I view the published site, so I'm going to click on publish first, and I might want to give it a web address. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Well, I guess I'll do that. I'm going to call it just test blog. Whoa. As you can tell, I don't type very well. And now my site is live. And then you can see I got this little drop down arrow right here. And I can view what the site looks like. And I can unpublish it if I want. So let's see what that published site looks like. Now, and just test and you can see that you can't see my dog's food in there because I don't want that to happen or people to see it that is now you don't have to publish let me just click unpublish here we've got it and let's say I'm still working on my uh, page I can preview what it looks like just by clicking preview and navigating around and seeing the different things and all I have to do is go down here click on the X and then I'm back into my editing feature so uh, because of time, I'm not going to go on and on about this. You can look at the slides deck that I've shared with you. Sorry, I had to sign in there. But this slide deck is a step-by-step -step how to, including how you can pay for a cheap $15 or $20 domain. And you'll notice here that it's got animations as well. So you can actually have a look. Hey, and there's a few people checking it out right now. So the animations will slowly walk you through how to create your own new Google site. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And I hope uh, people kind of uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, what you can do with Google Sites. Um, I really like it a lot. So uh, as, as Google Sites grows and gets better and gets better, you're going to see more features and more functionality. For now, for a class site or a student portfolio, it is all you need. Uh, so. I'm gonna end my little bit of the presentation. Um, before uh, we give a last word signing off, uh, I am gonna go in and put a couple of banners in there. Our hashtags we're using for these events are GEG Asia Live and GEG APAC. And if you wanna find us on the web, we will put this website in the, uh, in the, in the chat. Uh, so please uh, copy and paste that in just a moment. Uh, but for now, we're going to give the second last word in this order to Gary, then Steve, and then Aaron, who found us this wonderful tool called StreamYard. So take it away, Gary. We can all unmute our mics now, I think. OK. 
if you have any question or if you want to know more about Google uh, Apps or G Suite, you can just simply email us or send us a message or leave us a message in the YouTube comment box. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to personally answer all your questions. Steve. Uh, up, um, next to me. Um, yeah, and I would add that to that. Um, if you have any topic that you'd like to see people talk about, we're always looking for ideas and what people want to know. Um, yeah, this was kind of fun, but it's learning on the fly. So <laughs> next, the, ne the next time is always better. That's what they always say. Yeah, and Aaron. My turn. All right. As always, share, share, share anything you know. Don't think that other people know it already. I use tons of stuff all the time and I always assume everybody else knows and then I'll be mentioning it to somebody and they're like, I never heard of that. So share, like if there's any cool thing that you know, please make sure you share it with other people. And like they, everybody else said, please post anything you'd like to hear about or things you'd like to know. Um, find us on Twitter, tweet at us, like email us. Like we're here because we want to help people like innovate and use this stuff. And please join a GEG if you're not in a GEG already. And if you want to be a leader, like come on in and do it. Like we're waiting for you. Thanks. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, and I'll just echo what everybody said. Uh, there are GEG trainers, uh, leaders and innovators uh, all over the world. So wherever you are, uh, you know, Try to contact them. You can go to Google's uh, um, Google for Education database and find uh, trainers. And you can go online to Facebook and find uh, GEG Asia Pacific or even your country Facebook page. Uh, usually they're there as well. Uh, but reach out and find people that can, uh, you know, kind of answer your questions. And, and yes, you, as Steve said, might have ideas for us because we uh, love sharing what we do. And, uh, and we need to know what you need. So uh, reach out. Um, uh, for example, I'm uh, we're well. Steve and I are at gegnagoya at gmail dot com. Uh, Aaron, you would be reached at. Uh, probably tweeting at me is the easiest, and I put it on my name, but it's not showing up right now. But it's at tsol geek t e s o l g e e k. Um, tweet at me or find me on Facebook. I think I'm the only Aaron Knoxon on Facebook. There <laughs> might be one other one, but my name. <laughs> is the same way backwards and forwards, N-O-X-O-N. So you can find me pretty easy. And Gary, how about yourself? Um, I have Facebook and Twitter uh, from in Twitter at J Gary Garcia. While we uh, in Facebook, just look for Gary Garcia and you'll see my face with my wife. Wonderful. And I can be found on Twitter at Nathan Gildart uh, or Nathan Gildart on uh, on on. Uh, Facebook. Um, anyway, learninglightbulbs.com is my website. You can find me there as well. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. Uh, look for your GEG. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom banner, we've put uh, some ideas that we're thinking about GEG Asia Pacific Connect to do online live things like this in the future, uh... such as participant demo slams. Essentially what you saw were us doing 10 minute demo slams, but we'd like to do some kind of five minutes with this person, five minutes with that person. Uh, it'll be a little bit complicated with the StreamYard uh, app, but we could probably do it. But we wanna hear from you. And this could be an opportunity for you to present as well. It might again only be five or six people in the studio, but that's okay. Um, we will be doing GEG APAC Connect YouTube live events again. Uh, and that'll be coming at you from GEG leaders and members of Google Educator Groups, non-leaders, uh, non but members. So find your GEG in your area, uh, get involved and say, hey, I'd like to do that YouTube thing. And of course, yeah. why not an online pub night? Bring a couple of beers and for one hour, we'll all just kind of share things, <laughs> maybe through a Google Hangout and maybe not through YouTube. But thank you again for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, we have plans in motion to do this again, but we don't have dates. So keep your eyes out, please. And again, you can go to this website, sites.google.com slash view slash GEG Asia, and we will let you know what events are coming up. And please go to that GEG by country tab and find out a GEG near you. We're going to end the broadcast now. Thank you, Aaron, Gary, and Steve, and Jason, who had to leave early. We hope to see you again down the road. Have a great night, everybody, and have a great Good week. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night.